Welcome to this Final Cut Pro 10 training. My name is Larry Jordan and this is Chapter 8 on trimming. In this session I want to introduce the Precision Editor. The Precision Editor is new for Final Cut Pro 10 and in this session I want to define what it is and show you how to use it. The Precision Editor allows more precise trimming by expanding the view of the clips on either side of the edit. An added advantage is that the Precision Editor displays the handles, if any, associated with each clip. And the nice thing is the changes made in the Precision Editor are immediately displayed in the viewer. Using the Precision Editor is straightforward. You double click an edit point to open the Precision Editor. Handles are displayed as dim extensions at the end of each clip. The Precision Editor allows us to make both ripple or roll trims and I'll illustrate both. When you are done trimming one edit point, you can move from one edit to another in the timeline without leaving the Precision Editor using the up, down arrow keys. To exit the Precision Editor, either double click the edit, click the close Precision Editor button, press the enter key, or press escape. Let me show you how to open an edit in the Precision Editor. Do either a ripple or a roll trim, and you can do this by dragging, using keyboard shortcuts, using timecode, or using the skimmer and then I'll show you how to close the Precision Editor. Here's the trimming project we've been working with throughout this chapter. Let's say that I want to adjust the edit point where these first two clips touch. Double click the edit point and it opens up the Precision Editor. Now again, I'm doing this in lozenge view where the tracks are very small because it's easy to see what we're working with, but this works in any size view of the clips in your timeline. If you want to trim the out, click on it. Notice the yellow border. If you want to trim the in, click on it. Again, it borders in yellow. If you want to do a roll trim, click on the center divider between the two clips and it selects both. If we click on just the out, click hold and drag, notice that two images light up in the viewer. The left hand window shows us the out, which we are changing. The right hand window shows the in, which we are not changing. The small numbers in the black box describe how many frames were moving to the left, negative numbers, or how many frames were moving to the right, positive numbers. If I want to do a roll trim, grab the divider in the middle, and now I'm moving both images, as you can see in the viewer. Or if I want to trim the in, click hold and drag in the in, and I'm now trimming the in of a clip. We can zoom in on this farther by typing command plus. Command plus allows us to zoom in so we see more detail of the clips. And now you can see me moving exactly one frame at a time as it's jumping from one frame to the next. Again, I'm using the skimmer to roll from one frame to the next. We can use more than just simply the skimmer to drag back and forth. Comma moves us one frame to the left. Period moves us one frame to the right. Shift comma, 10 frames left. Shift period, 10 frames right. Select just the side of the edit you want to trim, and we're just moving just that one side of the edit. Notice the gray area that surrounds the skimmer. That gray area indicates the width of one frame. We're zoomed so far in, we're now able to see individual frame widths in our timeline. I'll zoom back out just a little bit, make that a little less visible. So we can trim using dragging with the skimmer, we can trim using the keyboard shortcuts, comma, and period. We can also trim using the skimmer itself. If you click above or below the edit point, you'll deselect it. But if an edit point is selected and you click on the clip with the skimmer, notice I'm dragging back and forth to find the spot where he just starts to talk. He, there he is. He takes that breath right there. I click with the skimmer. The selected edit point jumps right to where I click. This is a very fast way to find exactly where the action you want is, click, and the selected edit point jumps to it. We can also use timecode control. If I type minus, notice that my timecode display highlights a minus 22. I'm going to the left 22 frames when I press enter. Or type plus 31. There's my plus. 31 is one second and one frame because I'm using NTSC video at 30 frames a second. Hit enter and it moves to the right. Select both, minus 16. I'm doing a roll 16 frames to the left, or with both selected, plus 5. I'm doing a roll moving 5 frames to the right. The reason I like timecode is it's very precise. I know exactly how much I moved, and if something screws up, I know exactly by how much I screwed it up by. <laughs> 
So we can trim by dragging. We can trim by clicking the skimmer. We can trim by using timecode. And we can trim by using comma and period. Let me type Shift Z to get this to fit back in the window. Let's say I'm completely happy with this trim. If I press the down arrow key, it jumps to the next edit. Notice my handles here versus the clip that we're looking at, and my handles, which are dim, up here versus the clip I'm looking at. So I can move from one clip to the next by pushing the up arrow key, which moves me to an earlier clip, or the down arrow key, which moves me to a later clip. When we're done, we can either click Close Precision Editor, or double-click the edit, like right there, or press the Enter key, which is my favorite, or press the escape key. The precision editor allows us to make much more precise trims because it is easier to see what we're adjusting at the edit point. My name is Larry Jordan and thanks for watching this Final Cut Pro 10 training.